A magnitude 4.3 earthquake struck near San Bernardino on Tuesday morning, sending a ripple of movement across a wide stretch of Southern California. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, USGS, the quake occurred around 9.30 in the morning, centered near Muscoy and Rialto, roughly 50 miles or 80 kilometers east of downtown Los Angeles. It followed a magnitude 2.54 shock just an hour earlier and was succeeded by several aftershocks, including a magnitude 3.1 tremor minutes later. Tremors were felt across the Inland Empire, Greater Los Angeles, Santa Monica, Torrance, Long Beach and Pasadena. Although no immediate injuries or structural damage were reported, emergency protocols were activated and rail systems underwent temporary inspections. While modest in magnitude, the quake was a potent reminder of the seismic tension beneath the region's surface. Residents across Southern California quickly responded by submitting thousands of reports to the USGS Did You Feel It platform. In areas like downtown Los Angeles, people described a sharp jolt, while those closer to the epicenter reported a loud rumble, followed by brief but intense shaking. In many homes and workplaces, the sudden tremor triggered a mental checklist of safety protocols and a quiet recalibration of preparedness. Power remained intact and no significant damage to infrastructure was recorded. Southern California's seismic vulnerability is well established. The region sits atop a maze of active fault lines, particularly where the San Andreas Fault, the San Jacinto Fault Zone, and the Cucamonga Fault intersect. Although Tuesday's quake did not occur on the San Andreas itself, it struck uncomfortably close to its southern segment. An area scientists have long warned is overdue for a major rupture, possibly exceeding magnitude 7.8. The last known rupture in that segment occurred more than 300 years ago, placing it well beyond its estimated recurrence interval of 150 to 200 years. Closer to the epicentre, the San Jacinto Fault Zone is considered one of the most active fault systems in the region. Running from the San Bernardino Mountains to the Imperial Valley, it frequently produces strike-slip earthquakes, lateral movements along vertical fractures. Focal mechanism data from Tuesday's quake indicates just such a strike-slip motion, consistent with the behavior of the San Jacinto or one of its smaller branches. The shallow depth of about five miles or eight kilometers allowed the shaking to travel widely, amplified in some areas by the soft sediments beneath the Los Angeles basin. Also in the vicinity is the Cucamonga Fault, a less active but still dangerous system capable of producing earthquakes up to magnitude 6.5. This complex confluence of fault lines creates a dynamic zone where tectonic energy is constantly redistributed, sometimes quietly, sometimes with jarring force. The interaction of these systems means that even small earthquakes can play a significant role in shifting stress loads, either relieving tension on one fault or increasing it elsewhere. USGS scientists released an aftershock forecast shortly after the main shock, advising the public to stay alert for additional seismic activity. While most aftershocks are minor, history has shown that larger events can occasionally follow. Seismologists emphasize that even moderate quakes contribute valuable data for understanding how tectonic stress moves through the crust, sometimes dissipating gradually, and other times accumulating until released in a more violent event. Preliminary data suggest the quake occurred along a known fault segment rather than a newly discovered one. Instruments including regional seismometers, GPS stations and satellite-based sensors are actively refining the quake's mechanics. Data from NASA satellites using radar interferometry will further aid in evaluating how the landscape subtly shifted. This combined analysis helps researchers determine how stress may have been transferred across nearby fault systems and informs long-term hazard models. California's earthquake history reinforces the importance of such modeling. The 1971 San Fernando and 1994 Northridge earthquakes, both under magnitude 7.0, caused devastating damage because they struck near major population centers and originated from faults not previously classified as particularly hazardous. These events changed the way scientists and policymakers think about seismic risk, revealing that even moderate, shallow quakes can have outsized impacts, particularly in densely built environments. 
Although Tuesday's quake caused no damage, scientists and local officials took it seriously. Universities, including Cal State San Bernardino, quickly mobilized research teams to conduct real-time seismic observations and field surveys. Their goal? To determine whether the quake originated along a surface-visible fault strand or one buried deeper underground. Either way, the findings will contribute to better fault mapping and improved preparedness across the region. Inspections of public buildings, schools and bridges were carried out in accordance with California's strict post-earthquake protocols. Modern structures built under reinforced codes generally fared well, but concerns remain about older buildings lacking proper retrofitting, especially in economically disadvantaged neighborhoods. Officials used the opportunity to urge residents to revisit their emergency kits, secure heavy furniture and check evacuation plans. The San Jacinto Fault Zone, already under close observation due to its history of frequent activity, is receiving added scrutiny in the wake of the event. Its track record includes a magnitude 6.5 quake in 1968 and dozens of moderate events since. With urban centers like Hemet, San Bernardino and Moreno Valley situated nearby, even smaller seismic movements on this fault line warrant careful monitoring. Any slip along one segment can influence the mechanical state of adjacent segments, sometimes increasing the odds of a larger rupture. Stress transfer remains a central concern. While Tuesday's quake didn't strike the San Andreas Fault directly, its proximity raises questions about whether the event redistributed stress in a way that could influence future activity on that or neighboring faults. Paleoseismic records suggest the San Andreas in this region is overdue for a rupture, and even indirect interactions with nearby systems like the San Jacinto or Cucamonga faults could shift the equation. Urban planners and engineers rely on events like this to update risk assessments. Early geophysical modeling suggests Tuesday's rupture involved a minor strike-slip fault aligned with the broader San Jacinto system. This will now be factored into updated hazard models which guide zoning laws, emergency response protocols and infrastructure upgrades. The goal is not only to understand what just happened, but to anticipate what might happen next. California's early warning system, including tools like ShakeAlert and the MyShake app, was not widely triggered by this event due to its moderate intensity. However, these systems are designed to scale with quake severity, capable of issuing alerts seconds before major shaking begins. In future, more powerful quakes, those seconds could mean the difference between safety and disaster, stopping trains, pausing surgeries, or giving families just enough time to duck and cover. Tuesday's event also served as a timely drill in public awareness. Earthquake preparedness campaigns like the annual Great California Shakeout emphasize the importance of drills, communication plans, and community readiness. Public education combined with scientific insight forms the best defense against seismic disaster. It's not just about predicting the next big one, it's about making sure communities can respond when it comes. The Southern California Earthquake Center which coordinates one of the world's most advanced monitoring networks, will use Tuesday's quake as another data point in a growing archive. With dozens of seismometers, GPS stations and satellites working in tandem, researchers can analyze in near real time how stress accumulates and releases across fault systems. This continuous stream of information is essential not only for short-term forecasts, but for shaping long-term strategy. Seismic forecasts still estimate a roughly 75% chance of a magnitude 7.0 or greater earthquake hitting Southern California within the next 30 years. Tuesday's tremor doesn't significantly alter that forecast, but it does add new details to the picture, showing how even minor faults can participate in the broader tectonic story unfolding beneath the region. For residents, this event was a nudge to remain vigilant. Emergency kits, furniture fasteners and family communication plans may feel like chores until they become necessities. While a smaller quake may sometimes relieve pressure, it can also act as a precursor to something more dangerous. Science can map probabilities, but readiness is still the best defense. Though life quickly returned to normal across the Southland, geologists and seismologists will continue watching the region closely 
Whether this was an isolated release or part of a larger tectonic chain reaction remains to be seen. What is certain is that the ground beneath Southern California is alive, and so is the science working to keep us ready for what comes next. If you found this video helpful and want to stay informed about seismic events and science-backed updates from across California and beyond, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Your support helps us bring you timely, accurate and engaging content. Hit the notification bell so you never miss an important update, because staying informed is the first step towards staying prepared.